I'm here at the beautiful Rabbit Mountain Lavender Farm near Boulder, Colorado. Today we are going to be harvesting and then distilling Empress Purple, a cold, hardy, highly productive, very fragrant species of lavender. My company, Claw Hammer Supply, makes the equipment you will see in this video, but I'm far from the expert. So I'm going to turn it over to the co-owners of the farm. Enjoy. All right, so we're going to go cut some lavender to run through our still today. While we're gathering up the lavender, I'm going to go ahead and fill up this still and get the boiler going so we can start producing steam. It takes a little while for that to heat up. There's a separate video on assembling this whole kit. It's elsewhere. Maybe we'll put a link right there. So I'm just going to pop this hose in here. This is a food grade RV hose, so we have potable water so that we keep all of our products free of any contaminants. So on our little lavender farm, we have about seven different varieties of lavender, um, English lavenders, and then um, an intermedia lavender, which is kind of a hybrid of French and English lavender. It's a lavendin. They tend to have the highest oil production, but it's not a true English lavender. And so for kind of maximum oil production, we'll go ahead and harvest from Empress Purple lavender. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you my number one tip for how to maximize yield out of your lavender plants uh, in terms of lavender oil. Got about nine and three quarters pounds here. So with this system, our steam's gonna come out of the boiler here and down this pipe and into this port in the bottom of the retort. And then we have this false bottom, which allows the steam to come in underneath and migrate up through all the plant material uh, in the past, when we didn't have this, you'd find pockets of plant material still in the still that never got steamed. So this um, ensures that you get a, all your material gets steamed really well. And it just pops in here like this. Now all we gotta do is load up the retort with our lavender and wait for this guy to boil. We've tried packing it to different densities inside the retort. You can try getting more material in and try to increase your yield that way, but we've sort of found that if it gets too densely packed, then we'll find the center of the material didn't get steamed very well, so we try to leave enough space for the steam to permeate through everything. So we don't like to pack it too densely. Now we can just pop our column on top and wait for steam. All right, according to our controller, we are just creeping up on 202 degrees, which is actually the boiling point at our elevation here around 5,300 feet above sea level. And as you can see, we're starting to get a little steam out of there. Uh, I've got my gloves on in order to not burn myself. So now we just need to start pumping the steam through the plant material. There's some research that suggests that if you put cold product in the still, cold lavender, um, and then inject directly hot steam, you get the best results rather than allowing the steam to slowly come up and slowly heat up the lavender inside this still. And now we'll just start watching the temperature on the column. And when we see that approaching probably around usually like 150, 160, 170 degrees, uh, we'll see our very first drips of fluid. And then as the column heats all the way up to about 202 degrees, we'll have a real steady stream of hydrosol and essential oil dripping in. And now I gotta go turn on the water supply. Uh, incoming water comes in through this way just from the tap, uh, runs through the condenser, back out this way, and then out to our uh, sprinkler in our landscaping. And you can see we're getting our very first drips of oil and hydrosol starting to collect in our separatory funnel. We ran this batch uh, even a little longer than usual this time. I think we're getting close to an hour. Now we'll just let this uh, set for, it really doesn't have to sit for very long. It seems like the oil separates out pretty fast. Um, it's pretty much already, already separated out. The hydrosol will clarify a little bit in maybe the next 20 minutes or so.
All right, so now our uh, boiler has stopped steaming. So I'm gonna break down this setup so that it'll cool down faster so that we can load it up and do it all again. So first we just get this guy out of the way and everything is still pretty hot. So you definitely wanna wear gloves for this part. And set this aside and let things cool for a little bit. The other nice part about this setup is that we don't have to wait for this boiler to come up to temperature again the next time once we reload this because we're still holding it almost 197 degrees inside the boiler. Uh, I can look at the site gauge and see that I still have enough water in there to do another batch without exposing the element. Next time when we start it up, we'll be making steam in just a couple of minutes. All right, so now this is settled for about maybe 15 minutes or so. And I think all of our oil has risen to the top. So we can now capture the hydrosol and then the essential oil. All right, so this is what we've collected for the past few days of distilling. And um, we like to just keep adding oil to the same bottles we go so we don't have lots of little bottles around. And so every time um, we collect the essential oil out of the separatory funnel. We like to weigh this guy and then tear it out to zero so we know how much we're about to collect. And it looks like that time we got 20 milliliters. So my number one tip for trying to maximize the oil output, if you're gonna distill uh, fresh plants, just to get them right into the vessel as, uh, right away and distill. And the more quickly you do that, the less um, oil you'll lose. Second tier of tips, really it comes down to kind of trial and error with your plants. Um, different species yield different amounts of oil. I'm sure it's science, but it's also definitely a lot of art just dialing in your process and trying to maximize the amount of oil you can get. Uh, also, it depends really heavily on species of plants. So pick your plants appropriately to what you want to grow. And then you can't expect to get the same amount of oil, though, from an English lavender as you might from uh, like a, a lavender like Grosso, which is like the big high producing type that they use to commercially harvest uh, lavender oil. So hopefully those tips help you out a little bit and help you set expectations around what you can expect to, to get out of the still once you've run it. And thanks for watching.